Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ, and today I wanna to talk about chatterbaits or bladed jigs, and not only that, I wanna talk about five big mistakes that I see a lot of anglers make with a bladed jig, so stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by the bass hat, this hat that I'm wearing right now with this unique wooden bass patch on the top. If you guys want to pick one of these up, you can click on the link in the description and greatly help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. So chatterbaits, and I'm gonna say chatterbaits a lot in this video, and I really am talking about the bladed jig. The bladed jig is the lure category. The chatterbait was the original one of these lures, kind of like tissue and Kleenex. But guys, what I'm really referring to is all bladed jigs whether you fish a chatterbait maybe you like to fish a jackhammer maybe a strike king thunder cricket guggen baits clickbait there's a lot of different brands of bladed jigs out there in the market but really i'm talking about bladed jigs as a whole anytime i say chatterbaits a chatterbait is really one of the best tools that we have as fishermen to go out there and catch bass whether you fish in lakes or whether you fish in rivers or whether you're a bank fisherman, clean water in stained water in super muddy water, all different kinds of conditions. You can catch them around all different types of cover and you can fish it in a lot of different depth zones. This makes it a very versatile bait. When the fish are really eating a chatterbait, you also have the chance at catching a really big bass. So really all of us as bass fishermen should be really good with a chatterbait or a bladed jig. So let's get into the mistakes that I see a lot of anglers make. And this first one is a big one. The first mistake that I see a lot of anglers make with a chatterbait is they simply go out, they take it out there, they cast the bait out, and they just reel it back in. They pick it out of the water, they cast it out, and they reel it back in. And that's all that they do. They don't impart any action on this bait at all. They simply just cast it out there and crank it in in a, in a medium, medium fast retrieve. There are certain situations where you will catch bass doing that. We always want to maximize our lure's potential. We always want to try to catch as many fish as possible. Whether you're fishing a tournament, like the more fish you catch, the better chance you are at catching a big fish. Or maybe you're just out there fishing with your friends. Who doesn't want to go out there and beat all their friends even when they're throwing the exact same bait? Imparting a little bit of action on this bait will help you to get a lot more bites. What I'm talking about when I say imparting action on the bait, there's, there's a couple of things that you can do to this bait as you're bringing it in, as you're retrieving it, to really help you trigger a lot more bites. Now, the first thing is speeding up the bait or slowing down the bait. Sometimes when you're just out there cranking it in, every now and then just speed your reel up and then slow it back down. Speed that reel up and then slow it back down. Sometimes what happens is bass are actually following this bait. They're unsure if they want to actually eat it. And then all of a sudden it speeds off away from them. Kind of like a bait fish that realizes a bass is chasing them. And when it speeds off, that fish gets triggered. And then all of a sudden you slow it down and bait Bam, that bass runs into it, he eats it. You just triggered that bass that may have not bit on the standard retrieve. This works with a number of other baits, not just a chatter bait. You know, I actually caught fish like this on a whopper plopper one time. The only reason I would even get bit with a whopper plopper is if I would speed it up and then slow it down. Bam, that's when I would get the bite. Another way you can impart action on this bait is letting the bait free fall. Now, anytime I'm fishing this bait, what I like to do is I really like to hit it off certain types of cover and then let the bait fall. I'm not going to let the bait always fall to the bottom. I might just let that bait fall one, two, three foot. Literally just stop turning the reel handle for a split second or two. Let that bait fall. If you think about a lot of different lures that we fish, a lot of times bass are hitting that lure on that fall. It's the same thing with this chatterbait. Most of the time you fish it horizontal, but if every now and then you hit it off a piece of grass, you let the bait fall, bam, that's when that fish is going to get it. Or maybe you hit it off a dock post and you let it fall, bam, that's when this fish is going to get it. Or you bring it over a lay down and you let that bait fall, that's when that fish is going to get that. So imparting action on your chatter bait, letting it fall, speeding it up, slowing it down, varying the retrieve is really going to help you to trigger a lot more bites. Another thing that I hear a lot of guys say to me is, hey, I can't really fish a chatter bait. A bladed jig through wood cover, it tends to get hung up a lot. And the truth is, is that is true. And the reason it is true is because you're using the wrong trailer. And this is mistake 
Number two, when it comes to fishing a chatterbait is using the wrong trailer or always using the same trailer. As bass fishermen, we kind of have our go-tos. We have our favorites when it comes to lures. And the same thing can be true for a trailer on a chatterbait. A lot of us like to pick up that exact same trailer that worked for us in the past and we always like to use it. You really want to change your trailer depending on the cover, depending on the situation that you are fishing. Now, I don't like to complicate bass fishing at all. I like to uncomplicate it. I like to simplify it. With that being said, there are two main trailers that I like to fish with a chatterbait. The first one is a Strike King structure bug. Now, if you look at a Strike King structure bug, it is actually kind of shaped like a Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver. Most of us know what a Sweet beaver is it will kind of lay flat on your fingers if you're holding it like this anytime you're fishing around wood cover this is the trailer that I like to use and I will trim this up and I will feed it on the back of a chatterbait this really allows that bait to come across wood cover very effectively without rolling when you use a trailer like a boot tail style swim bait or a trailer that is kind of shad shaped when you bring it over a limb it'll roll to the side it'll get hung in some cover so using a flat trailer one that sits parallel to the water surface is one that's going to come over cover especially wood cover a lot more effectively now one other thing about this trailer is it actually also skips really well so if i'm skipping a chatterbait under docks under overhanging trees wherever it may be if i'm skipping a chatterbait a lot i like to use this structure bug the other type of trailer that i like to use with a chatterbait is the shad style chatterbait this one right here is a gary yamamoto zeko trailer anytime i'm fishing it around grass which is probably where i fish a chatterbait 70 percent of the time this is the trailer that I'm going to use or anytime I'm really trying to imitate a shad if I'm not fishing it around wood cover uh, maybe I'm just fishing in open water maybe next to a seawall or something like that I will use the Yamamoto Zeko trailer in white so make sure you mix up your trailer to fit the conditions that you are fishing how do you pick out the right chatterbait? How do you pick out the right size, the right color? Keep it simple. You can get too caught up with trying to put in three strands of green pumpkin and, and four strands of black. And guys, most of the time, it's just about being where the fish are and not necessarily the colors of your bait. If I am fishing a chatterbait in zero to four or five foot of water, I'm gonna fish a three eighths ounce chatterbait. Can you fish a half ounce? chatterbait in that situation absolutely you might need to reel a little bit faster to keep that bait from digging down now if i'm fishing from about five foot of water to about eight foot of water i'm going to fish that half ounce bait if i'm fishing anything over eight foot of water eight nine ten even deeper than that that's when i might step it up to one of the big chatterbait a three quarter ounce chatterbait i have four main colors that i like to fish in a chatterbait i like to fish a white or shad colored chatterbait I like to fish a green pumpkin colored chatterbait. I like to fish black and blue, and I like to fish a red chatterbait. Those are the four colors that I fish the most. Every now and then I'll fish a white and chartreuse one. Anytime I feel like the fish are feeding on threadfin shad, gizzard shad, bait fish, like that, I'm going to use that white chatterbait, no matter if it's a muddy water condition, clear water condition, stained water condition. Now the same thing as if they're feeding on bluegill. If I know that the fish are feeding on bluegill, maybe I see bluegills around docks, maybe I see bluegills spit up in my live well, I'm gonna use a green pumpkin chatterbait. And I'm gonna fish that again, muddy water, clean water now typically when i'm fishing in muddy water with a green pumpkin chatterbait i like to dip the tail in chartreuse just a little bit more bright color to help those fish hone in on that bait the time that i use a black and blue is anytime i'm in a low light condition if i'm fishing in the rain if it's very dark and cloudy and overcast conditions in muddy water clean water stained water i like to use a black and blue if it's very dark out. also if you fish in watercolor that's tannic it's that water that's almost like tea colored you see this water a lot in florida they're clean water but it's really dark it's literally like black 
XT. That's when I also like to fish the black and blue. Now, the only other color of chatterbait I like to fish is this red one here, this fire crawl. When that water is anywhere from about 48 degrees to about 60 degrees in the spring, in that pre-spawn time frame, this red just works really, really well. I don't necessarily know the reason it works. I just know that red baits work in general and a red chatterbait in that condition works really, really well. Real quick, I wanted to talk about blades on chatterbaits. There's a lot of different style of blades out there on the market. The brand Z-Man chatterbait, they have several different blades. Here's the thing. I don't usually get hung up on the size of a blade until I know that I'm around fish. Don't really stress about your blades until you start catching fish. Once you start catching fish, then you can experiment with the blade to try to find what the fish are eating a little bit better. The fourth mistake that I see with a lot of guys fishing a chatterbait is not fishing it on the right equipment. Here's the deal. And I think this with every type of lure there is out there, if you are getting bit, you're hooking up with that fish and you're getting that fish in the boat or on the land. If you're not losing fish and you're hooking up with the ones that hit it, then you have the right rod and reel. If those fish are hooked really well, then don't change your rod and reel because there's so many factors that go to the right rod and reel. One is the hook set. All of us have a little bit different hook sets. Some of us set the hook really hard. Some of us set the hook a little bit softer. So guys who set the hook softer can usually get away with stiffer rods because they need a little bit extra to get that hook through. With that being said, I really feel like I have found the best chatterbait rod. If you fished chatterbaits for a long time, there's kind of a debate out there it's on whether you fish glass rods or whether you fish graphite rods. To me, I actually have what I would consider a, a mix of both. This is a graphite rod, but it has the action of a glass rod. Now this rod in particular is an Akuma Guide Select cranking rod. This rod is a seven foot, five inch, medium heavy power rod, but it has a moderate action. So I have plenty of power to get that fish away from heavy cover to drive a good hook set, but I really like the moderate action. When you fish a chatterbait, you really want a moderate action. The thing about using a glass rod, which usually has that moderate action, that parabolic bend, is you lose a lot of feel. That's why I like this rod so much is because it's graphite. I have good feel with it, but it has more of that parabolic bending rod. The reason why you want that parabolic bend is it really allows the bass to get this bait just a little bit better. And the other thing that it does is if a fish is right beside the boat and it makes a hard dive real fast, that parabolic moderate action bend is gonna absorb some of that force of that fish diving to the bottom. The other thing is your line. I typically fish a chatterbait on 20 pound fluorocarbon line. Every now and then I will go down to 15 pound line if I wanna try to get that chatterbait a little bit deeper. When it comes to reel, this is the Kumo Helios SX reel. This is a seven one to one gear ratio reel. This is the reel that I would suggest, the gear ratio that I would suggest for chatterbaits. It's a good all around gear ratio where you can slow a bait down you can also move it fast. The other mistake that I see in a chatterbait is assuming that all chatterbaits and bladed jigs are the same, that they're all created equal. This couldn't be further from the truth. Some different brands out there actually go down a little bit deeper. Even though it's the same weight, some will actually go a little bit higher in the water column. Some have a really good action under the water from side to side, while others are just a straight line going, coming straight to you. I actually put together a video where I compared five different brands of bladed jigs it's right here, guys. If you wanna watch that video and actually see underwater footage of how those baits look differently underwater, click on that video, give me a like, comment below if you have a question, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.